it, it hasn't been all doom and gloom because the older generation those days they had a lot going for them which the younger generation today don't have they have scholarships they had the best of education they had it good at the time the best time in nigeria let me be honest with you from 1954 to 1966. Let me start from 1954. When the Federation was created in 1954, North, East, and West, the budget available from the British government, look, we have been taking care of you, we have been saving from cocoa, we have been saving from cotton, we have been saving, they now distributed the money to the government. The West got 47 million pounds. The East got about 38 million pounds. I think the North got about it. But see what Awilowo did with 48 million pounds from 1954 to 1959. See what Zeke did with 30-something million from 1954 to 1959. Those were good days. I was not saying there was no corruption, but we knew it as 10%. You will take 10%, but you will still perform the contract. Now, from 1960, the first budget, independence budget that Okotiebo passed as the Minister of Finance was 59 million pounds. From there, five-year projects were you know, created and everything was being done. The whole system collapsed in 1966. And that's where Nigeria's problem started. Corruption now entered in a heavy way. Today, the pain of this country is corruption. Some people argue a little differently. You know, yes, historians always, for the sake of, you know, history, always talk about remote causes and immediate causes of a particular problem. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, Jifa Kinjide here who talked about, mm -hmm. you know, our marriage, our amalgamation, at the very first instance, being 40 in the very first instance, and you know, making our lives henceforth a little difficult. You see, with due respect to Akinji Day, he's my friend, my big brother. There are two of them in Nigeria today, who I call corporate Nigerians. Akinji Day, I name him as a corporate Nigerian. Obasanjo, I name him as a corporate Nigerian. Why? Akinji Day has been in the corridor of power in Nigeria, in the body of power since 1956. Uh, uh, he admitted that much. Okay. Now, when you put him in a corner, his whole idea is geared towards government. Obasanjo has been in governance as the rear commander when he was 26, 29, as a chief minister for uh, works when he was 32, as a chief of army staff, as head of state when he was 38. Until today, he's still in corporate Nigeria in the quarter. Now, what I want to show is this. They are a bit, with due respect, very myopic in their views. What is wrong with how Nigeria was created? Tell me which country in this whole world has not got the same shikism we have in Nigeria. Great Britain today is made up of the Welsh, the Irish, the Scottish, and the English, and they don't like each other. The Scottish man will not want to do that. have anything today with an Englishman. The Irish man will tell you that, look, it's not only you blacks that were taken into slavery to America. We, Irish, were also taken by the English, which is true. But they live together. Look at Ghana. Look at any other country that has the same problem he claims we have. They have overcome it. Look at Malaysia. Look at Singapore. Look at Indonesia that have the same problem with us. So for a candidate to be attributing that that is the problem we still have after 60 years, it's a non-starter. Let's actually even listen to some of what he says. We actually do okay. have it on tape. That we didn't have the right marriage. The critical problem of this country was the marriage. And I knew that when I entered parliament. You find there is hardly anything common between the various people who went to the marriage. If you don't have the common, if you marry a bad wife, how can he succeed? Or if the wife married a bad man as husband, how can he succeed? That is a critical thing in Nigeria. And in fact, when I entered parliament, 
we had a nominated Senate. And whenever I had matter, in fact, when I was Minister of Education, and if you look at the thing of the accountant, I, I created that, uh, I piloted that, that bill to the House of Reps and the, and the Senate. And although I was not a member of the Senate, I was sitting in the Senate. And I was sitting with white people as members of the Senate because they were nominated. So all these problems are bad. All these problems were, many of them are inflicted on us. What about the ones that were inflicted on ourselves? I agree. You are right. You see, there are certain things that should not happen that happen. For instance, why should you have a coup to overthrow an elected government? It doesn't make sense. But it happened. But that was not inflicted on all by the British or by the Americans or the Canadians or the French. It was self-inflicted. Again, it happened because we are not one. A marriage which should never have been a marriage. Amalgamation has come, and in my view, it will stay forever. Because, I, I, I mean, it be, breaking up. There's a big debate. There's been a big debate that the amalgamation wasn't, uh, you know, our own doing. We we did not want it. We had no say in it. You know, it wasn't something that we came up with ourselves. Uh, and a host of people have been debating as to whether or not it is worth celebrating, even though the federal government seems to maintain that uh, there is actually something worth celebrating in our amalgamation 100 years on. We are celebrating that we are free. We are like to be still a colonial country till today. We are not, we are not Isn't free that worth celebrating? We were not free in 1914. We were, we're just not, we're not celebrating 1914. We we're celebrating independence which Britain gave to us in 1960. That's we're celebrating today. Yes. Which is good. Yes. But a host of people say, I mean, next year we're going to be 100 years together as Nigeria. Yes. And they say, celebrate that. Do you agree with them? I don't. Because that's nothing to celebrate. What happened in 1914 was British economic interest. One they passed the Mineral Act, and I've said that before, we they put all the minerals in Britain. Two, they passed a criminal law to set to set our criminal matters. And of course, there was something they did it in, that was the Arbitration Act. So, if you talk of 1914, please, you have little to say that as regards independence, if you want to be really factual and honest. It was British interest, Serving British interests. And I've told you, you have Lord Carberry, who was the chairman of the Royal Niger Company, and you have uh, uh, the colonial secretary, Lord Harcourt, and Port Harcourt is named after him. And if, if, if I had my shoes on, I would even call Port Harcourt named after him. You rename it? I rename it. It's one of the worst errors in our history. In fact, these are the people who brought Tajani to this country. So why should you name Port Harcourt after him? And of course, Lugard. Some, when I go to Kaduna, you see some area, they call it Lugard. Why do you call it Lugard? A man who inflicted one of the worst things in the history of this country. Why shouldn't you make any effort after him? It is totally unworthy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. What do you think? I don't agree with him. On which one? On the amalgamation that it has brought, the position we are. Amalgamation, if amalgamation did not come, what we will have had is Southern Protectorate of Nigeria and Northern Protectorate of Nigeria. Now, let's take the Southern Protectorate. If, according to him, it was the amalgamation that brought it. Today, I can assure you, there is no unity in the South. What holds Nigeria as one today is that the North, is being looked as a threat by the South. If you remove the North from Nigerian geography today, the South will disintegrate. The Yoruba man does not like the Shekiri man. The German does not like the Shekiri man. The Ibibu does not like the Calabama. man. The, once you know, the North leaves Nigeria, the whole South will collapse. Is the North themselves united? They are not. There is no more one North again. So what I'm telling you now that the joinder or the incorporation is not our problem. We are not the only country in the world where we have this sort of diversity. What is the Go to Tanzania. Tanzania and Tanganyika joined together. 
They are one of the most stable government in, in the world today. Go to Ghana. He said about military coup changing everything. Was it not a military coup that changed Ghana? It all depends on the character of the leadership. Rawlings changed Ghana from what it was to what it is today, which all of us are proud of. We are sending all our children Even there. Some say infamously. It, who said it? The way some of those other gentlemen were killed is not what we want here. Look, the Hebrew man will say the means justifies the end. <laughs> Because if he did not brutalize them the way he did, he would not have sent the fear of God to the other people. You see, we need a revolution in this country to ginger our leaders, to ginger our leaders to see the reality. So you do not agree with him on the side that, you know, the British, I mean, the remote cause of our problems lay with the British? No way. You, you do not agree with him? That's 100 years do you, ago. But do you agree that we should actually celebrate what we have next year? I mean, we should be celebrating our centenary. I'm not saying we should. Look, we are victim of circumstances. We could not have changed it. But we've lived under it for 100 years. Haba, on our own, how can we not change what we have. Yorubas have a proverb that one generation must be, can be poor, but three generations together cannot, you know, be poor. So if I was born in a poor condition, should I remain poor?